Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins. We have a whole lot of firsts that happen on this episode, and today's episode is in that number as well. So I'm in here with my guys. I got Smitty sitting right next to me, Darius right next to him, and Ramel. These guys are experts in the credit space, in the funding space, in the real estate space, and in the storage, rental, and purchase space. And we're in here, right, having a really dope conversation. And then we had a really random accident. The power went out in the whole studio. You can see us here. Don't they look good? Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. They look good. But... All of our audio from this part of the episode is complete trash. So we didn't panic. We didn't chalk it up to a waste. They were about to fly out on a private jet anyway. So I said, let's finish the episode on the jet. I'm going to take y'all along with me. Here we go. Full transparency. What's up? What's up, y'all? You see, we are back with this episode. We had a freak situation happen in the studio a minute ago. Uh, power went out. There's some construction happening outside. The guys had to get to the jet. So I'm like, I'm coming to the jet. Boone said they had a seat for me, and we here. I'm in my seat. What we, we had, doing? I think we shut the whole podcast studio just down. Yeah, just like, yeah. Just like we had to come in and just shut everything. Down. That's we how about we to get too much that's game. Something new, that's something right. new for your podcast. That's, that's, that's new. That is that's new for right. us. Too much transparency. Yeah. Too much <laughs> transparency happening. Okay. Definitely okay. too much transparency. So. I want to get into the stuff because I know y'all got to get to Miami. I'm not going to be able to go to Miami. I talked. I was capping. You sure? No. I, was, I, was, I was capping, but I'm here. I think she can go. We're going to miss her. Next, next time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> I can't go. So I'm here. I'm in a jet, and I'm kind of getting it. Like, I'm feeling like this is dope content. This is actually like, so what do you think about people who are, I know y'all have to be somewhere in commercial flights just one lining up, yeah. right? What do you think about people who really don't have any value to offer except lifestyle content me personally i don't like it i feel like especially in the space we're in right now people are tapping into you for a reason not just for the lifestyle but because they want to do what you what you're doing they want to live how you're living and that costs money so if you're giving them just the lifestyle stuff and not giving them the basis it's like why would i hang around with you and you keep showing me all your flex not showing me how to get to it mm. so you got to show me how to get to it and i feel like it's our duty so like okay this is how like they say i get too much value content because mm -hmm. like if i made a hundred thousand i'm gonna show you how i did it so yeah. i don't really care about all this stuff this is how you do it this is how you do it this is how you buy the house this is how you fix it up this is how you flip it this is how you rent it out so you can do the same thing so yeah. that's my personal opinion i don't all this i think you gotta I think you gotta at least do both you're gonna do it because truthfully i do it I, I, do, I do show my lifestyle. I do show what i'm what i'm doing when i'm out of town when i'm yeah. in town i don't care i show yeah but i also have the information as well so um to back it up but i mean if you not so much bagging up on the information side and trying to help on the value side mm -hmm. you're gonna have to fix that because that ain't that ain't that ain't leading it in the right direction exactly yeah yeah i think it's about just being genuine yeah. right because people can see right through it mm -hmm. right you do do all the lifestyle stuff and then you don't have any value off and people can see right through it so mm -hmm. for us i think it's just really showing we give game we in properties we closing deals and when we traveling doing different things just it's just showing our real life. Yeah. So I know y'all recently merged like in business on a particular project. Are y'all partnering all over or y'all just partnering right now on a particular project that you're collabing on? We actually talking about, we don't want to talk about, it, but we actually talking about a deal we're working on now. Mm -hmm. And it's specifically some smaller projects just to, just for additional cash flow. But we're working on something like an actual big, big project we're working on. Yeah. All of a sudden, it, so what's gonna be the big thing? Like we got business credit over here, storage uh, units over here, real estate over here. Like, what's the thing that y'all should be y'all are gonna be focusing on, and why? So one of the things we was talking about in general was buying like a mansion. That way, not for us to live in, obviously, but more so for rental purposes. Not just Airbnb, but more so a bigger rental purpose. So like, you know, we got friends that do stuff like that, and they showed yeah. us the numbers and things. And also, we always flying down Atlanta. We always flying down to Miami. And we spent a lot of money doing it, so it makes sense for us to have our own spot down there for us. But not to mention, we can do podcast stuff down there, or we can just rent not or and we can rent it out. Somebody say fifty thousand for the month to run out. We don't plan on coming down this month. Yeah, you can go and do it. Run that play for me. So we see it all over the internet. Everybody has their mansion masterminds and all this stuff. I mean, a mansion isn't a light ticket. We're yeah. we're talking what, like a million, two million, three yeah. million. Run that down for me, how that makes sense. So you gotta think, 
with the mansion with properties that's on that higher ticket, your down payment might be 20%. Mm -hmm. So you think a million dollars, that's $200,000. Yeah. Between three individuals, that's not as much. I don't, some people watch it like that's still a lot of money, but we got different business, we got different things going on. He shows how to get the business funding on, on deck. He can get two hundred thousand dollars on his own. Imagine three people come together. Mm -hmm. That's why collaboration is so big. Okay, we need to put up four hundred thousand. Well, a hundred fifty, hundred fifty, hundred fifty. Now we got that plus closing costs. We can get all that right there. So, does it make sense to run this same play? Like, let's say the people who are watching this right now mm -hmm. can't do a two three million dollar mansion, right? But we can do a two three hundred thousand dollar home. Facts. Does that play basically run the same way? Yeah, hell yeah. Just the numbers are they're gonna be worked out different, but you still still same setup, still same profit margins if you got your money, it's gonna be the same. Yeah. But just lower the level. But the way you're setting stuff up, you don't really need out of pocket money. Exactly. So we gonna we uh, for me personally, See, I'm easy. using other people's money for everything. What does that what mean? Is. So everybody's talking <laughs> I mean, you know, I know what it means. Yes. I know what some of it means, but yes. I'm sure you can still put me on game. What does it mean? Everybody's talking about other people's money, other people's money, like somebody's taking yeah. the risk. What does this right. mean? So it's two layers of other people's money. Other people's money could be collaboration of mm -hmm. other people who got good credit or has money, mm -hmm. or other people's money could be the bank's money. So I use for the most time the bank's money. Okay. The banks always use our money, mm -hmm. you know, to invest it or go lend it out to make money off our money. We mm -hmm. need to use their money so we can use it to invest and make money off their money. That's so when I mean. you're saying the bank's money, are we talking about like Bank of America, uh -huh. Wells Fargo? Yeah. So none of this sketchy like A, B, C, D, nah, E, F, nah. G loans. <laughs> nah, stuff. nah, no loans. I well, no loans right now. On especially for beginning tier, I like to use credit cards, and we call we do credit card stacking. Okay. So that means going to get multiple different credit cards that equal up to a large amount. Mm -hmm. So if I go to 10 banks, they give us a $20,000 limit, I can now accumulate $200,000 and I will use that route. Okay. Be real with me though. Mm -hmm. People ain't really got good credit across the board. Mm -hmm. Can we help people with bad credit? Uh, yeah, 100% we can help people with uh, bad credit. I'll give them a software that I use uh, with these new AI systems and software. They got some stuff built out nice. It's called Dispute Panda. What mm -hmm. Dispute Panda is, we can come into software and do three moves and be able to generate ourselves dispute letters to be able to start attacking the negative things on our credit report. So we are fixing the credit first? If you have to, yes, you have to. Okay. And then some people always say this, oh, I don't got time, right? Mm -hmm. I don't got time or I don't feel like learning it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's not my forte. Okay. Well, okay, well then, it's a quarter million dollars on the other side of this thing you don't got time for. So whatever you're doing, you better be doing something that's worth a quarter million dollars that mm -hmm. you say you don't got time for. Okay, y'all 29, 30, yeah. 31? 29. 31. 29. Yeah. 29. 31. 29 and 31. How, if I'm being real, yeah. I'm not trying to see a 29 year old to talk to me about my finances. Like, how do you establish credibility here? That's the What's problem, right? That's the problem, right, right there. Donnie, do you date down or up? Would you date a 29? Would you date 29? <laughs> you wouldn't date a 29? No, 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 no. Oh, no. You mean Would you age? date somebody 29? Yes. For no reason. Why? But I, I'm 44 years old. What's what does that mean? That? I'm not dating a 29 year old. Like, what if you mature? You know, it's funny, right? It's funny. I told the people that age, and they like, yo, you more mature than the 50 year olds. I believe it because I believe when I was 29, I was more mature than a lot of people who were older than me, old enough to be my mom. Yeah. But no, what do I have in common with a 29 year old? I mean, I think you should look at the environment the 29 year olds in mm -hmm. and what they have going on they might have the same responsibility situation lifestyle that you have Listen. whereas actually some commonality is going <laughs> on is just really a number, is yeah, a number. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. there I are things something. that a 44 year old can do with a 29 year old explain a little bit because yeah. we transparent on this show <laughs> it ain't it ain't love and marriage <laughs> <laughs> no I, I I don't, I okay, don't, we'll, we'll I don't fully slide. agree with I that what was the question no, okay, but the question? but but okay, so where were you going let's say I said yes Okay, I was just wondering, for your caliber, what is that what you would do? But I mean, if you said yes, I mean, I believe how, there's nothing wrong with it. How did we go from, how do I trust you with my finances, to what I date a 29 year old? Nah, I had that question for you personally, because I wanted to ask. I feel like it's a thing. Is there a thing happening right now? Nah, I'm, you know, I'm chilling, but I just wanted to know, you know? I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Okay, get back well, to I'll, my I'll answer, Okay, I'll answer the question as far as what you originally asked about. <laughs> okay, go ahead. As a 31, 29 year old, right? Why would you trust us with giving you financial saying. literacy, right? Because we have people that's 45, 50, 60, that's in our programs, but 
they're not up to date on the new information, right? So we're in masterminds, we're getting outside in different rooms, we're learning mm -hmm. new different things that my dad, you know, my uncles, my, my aunts, they didn't get this information back when they was coming up. This information wasn't privy. So, mm -hmm. and we're giving new strategies, right? So yeah. even when it comes to buying real estate, back in the day, you would go on the, the yellow pages and call. We don't do that no more, right? Yeah. Now we go online, we could get everybody's phone number in that entire county. Yeah. So it's more about just understanding that with, with, with new people coming up, we learn new different things and we can learn from each other. And I think that's Not why he asked about what that. you think now, because yeah. like, we could all add value to each other. I don't really think it's an age yeah. thing. Like you could give yeah. us some game yeah. and we could give you some game based upon where we at. I just remember when I was starting out in business, like when I was not even in business, like yeah. when I was in corporate, I was um, a higher level executive yeah. in my particular company that I work for. Yeah. Nobody took me seriously. Like imagine yeah. me at 23, 24 years old. I looked 16, 17 yeah. years old. So people weren't trusting me like with their big home purchases, especially when I was in real estate. Yeah. It was like, what does this kid know about real estate? So that was something that I had to overcome early on. Do you find like- Absolutely. I relate to yeah. that 100%. Yeah. When I first got started in real estate, I was a real estate agent. So I was 23. Mm -hmm. So all my clients was older. Yeah. So at that point they like, uh, I don't know. And also the older people are buying more expensive houses. Yeah. The more bigger the house, the more money I make. Yeah. So I had to make sure I had it suited and booted. I had to make sure I was super professional, super on time, which you want to be like that anyway, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. I had to overdo it to prove myself. And then once you start getting, like, okay, they look your name up. Oh, you sold 50 houses, 60 houses. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't care about the age. Clearly you know what you're doing. But when I first got started, I had to it's overdo it. It still happens. I had to right? overdo it like a mother. I had, I had people try to backdoor me. Like yeah. I'm going about a million dollar property and this lender that's supposed to be lending me the money, trying yeah. to go behind me, go to the seller, just because I'm younger and don't really think I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah. I, I think, like uh, you talked about early in your corporate career, I was working at Pepsi before I started being a full-time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But I would come in and teach senior management all the new tools on how to work different softwares, Excel, yeah. spreadsheets, where they didn't get that information. So. I think it's value yeah. to work with people who are younger. Like, I believe in yeah. keeping young people around me, yeah. for sure. I <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> she will keep young people around her, but yeah. she wouldn't, okay. But. I believe in keeping young people around me Cap. because it keeps you youthful. That was Cap. <laughs> Talk about, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we'll touch you on, keep going. Yeah, Y'all got hey, something going hey, on? Hey, you got to throw it in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I believe in keeping young people around because it keeps you youthful, but it yes. also keeps you up to date with the information that's coming out right now. Like, you made a real good point, Ramel. Yeah, um people who are your senior like the older we get the more stuck in our ways yeah, yeah. we want to be and y'all have the benefit of still being very like curious and still dealing with like no no disrespect but still dealing very much in your childlike imagination right like when you're in your 20s early 30s yeah. like you still believe that everything is possible yeah. because you hadn't had as much life as experience as <laughs> somebody uh, who's um, 44 yeah. years old so I'm, just, I'm gonna put that out there so talk to me about your start like you 29 years old you could be out in the streets you 31 you could be out in the streets doing all kind of stuff but y'all are focused on yeah. business like how at such a young age you see a lot of people 44 that's trying to get it together yeah so while we wait till then let's start working on it now mm -hmm. yeah mine was an easy uh, turn point for me uh, three, four years ago, before I started, I knew nothing about business, I knew nothing about credit, I knew nothing about none of the stuff that I'm into now, around none of the people that I'm around, but uh, the turning point with me was from my, I was in Chicago, so Chicago is a reckless place, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's very reckless, truly, not just like on the internet, but my friend had got killed, so the person I was living with, uh, we were living together for like a year or two, mm -hmm. uh, one of my closest friends, uh, we was outside, uh, altercation, altercation happened, he got shot outside the club, he, he, end up uh, passing away, RIP to my guy Matthew. But, um, so that turning point for me was an eye opener. And it was like, all right, man, am I gonna go down this route, bro? Like, is, is this really gonna be something I wanna be in the midst of? Yeah. And I decided, I'm like, nah, and I had a daughter. So I got a daughter, I had a daughter, just having a daughter, that happened. And I'm like, all right, something gotta change, something gotta be different, and something has to go a different way. I cannot stay around this environment, I cannot stay here like at no cost. Yeah. I'm like, I'm deciding, I'm moving out, I'm going to Atlanta, like I'm going to Atlanta. 
and just having a friend of mine was in the business where he had got started and then he helped me get into it uh, me learning from him got me in the door of learning all this stuff yeah. but my turning point was that mm. yeah, for, you, for, for me uh, i feel like i was prepped for this because my dad I mean, he worked 40 years correction officer captain so he always told me never settle for a job he always said job stands for just over broke mm -hmm. right because he did it you know paycheck to paycheck and not necessarily saying that you can't start with a job, right? But don't end with the job. So yeah. from young, I always had the entrepreneurship mindset. I just was putting it in the wrong places. So um, I was in college, and this was the turning point for me because I was in college and I was selling weed on campus like Jordans and doing dumb stuff, but I got arrested. Um, they was trying to kick me out of college. They put me on terminal probation. And at that point, I gotta do something different. It just don't make no sense. I, I wasn't raised this way, right? And um, I went on YouTube, um, I started learning about real estate, I jumped in the course, and I just see other people that look like me doing it. That was really it, the exposure. Uh -huh. Seeing other black men, black women, really successful, buying properties, nice cars. Yeah. If they could do it, I could do it. And at that point, like, there's no point going back. Yo, I think it's mad wild how your father was a corrections officer and you ended up yeah. Meeting one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was yeah, that was that was a whole other experience. Like when I, I I was in the jail, he seen me. It was a big old in my oh. family. Yeah, like because he was at, he worked at Rikers, so it was a whole. You big old were thing. at Rikers. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So you weren't doing petty crime. So I, yeah, it wasn't. They let me go though. So it okay. was like. A, Imagine pulling up on your dad. Yeah. In yeah. Rikers, how yeah. old were you? What was I? I was uh, probably like 16, 16 okay. 17. All right. So young kid stuff. Yeah, you young trouble. That, yeah, young dumb stuff. And you knew right away this is not what we want to do. Because yeah. I see other people that was way tougher than me. Like, really <laughs> right. had stuff to lose. Uh, like, you are not right. about that this life. This is not me. Right. This nah. is not you. I'm not built for this. I yeah. got to stick. Does that have anything to do with the level of integrity that you operate at today? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Like staying but, out of um, trouble? Absolutely. It's more so just, um, just knowing where you come from, right? I, it was, I was I disappointed my dad, disappointed my family. Like, again, I wasn't raised that way. And there's a lot of us that we come from the streets or we come from poverty, and then we see other people outside getting in trouble that we want to get into it knowing in our household that's not even a standard. So yeah. it's more of like me just operating by the standard that was set in my household. Yeah. And I want to set that same tone for my sons now because I'm a dad now. I got two boys and I'm like, I know what I was giving my dad problems. I don't want them to give me the same problem. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to just walk on the straight path at this point. What about you, Boom? What was your start? Why? I think um, my start, I was working at a retirement home. Yeah. So I was super broke. And just being fed up, that's when you start transitioning. And I went to a class, and that class kind of was a real estate seminar. And it kind of opened me up. That exact class didn't make me money, mm -hmm. but it opened my mind to like, okay, I need to deep dive into this. Yeah. And to answer your first question, I think, like you said, he was prepped for this. I think I was like forced into this, mm -hmm. like as far as being a little too much, not too mature, but mature early. So I'm the oldest out of my brothers and sisters and oldest out of cousins. And when I was growing up, my mom would have, she, she, she's always trying to help people. So she would have people 40 something, 50 something. Hey, they on hard times. They can stay with us. Yeah. So like, even I was joking earlier, that was like a real thing. I seen people 40, 50 year old, damn bad. Yeah. And I always said I would never be like that. Even when I turned 18, um, I moved out. And like I was 17, 18, I moved out. And my cousin, he was 15. His mom was like, damn bad. He ended up moving in with me. So I was like a dad. I'm talking about, I'm taking him to basketball practice. I'm signing his guard. I was his guardian, like legal guardian. Mm -hmm. So like early on, I had to be like the oldest. And then um, growing up, my mom and dad wasn't together, so I would stay at one house for one week and another house another week. When I was yeah. at my dad's house, I, um, he worked until like 10 o'clock at night. So when they came home from school, I had to cook dinner, get them situated, um, homework, everything. I used to hate it. So on the weekends, I'd be out, but during Monday through Friday, when I was over there, I'm I'm being a dad all the way until he came home. So like, all rip, I was, I'd say it's not a bad thing, but I was mature since a child early on. So it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It sounds like all y'all were. Yeah. The one consistent thing that I heard from everybody is I found a person or a class. Like I invested yeah. some time, I invested some money. Like how has making investments in yourself, like not even investments in yourself, because you hear that all the time, right? Like I'm making investments in myself, blah, 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 blah. How, how important is mentorship? It's the best thing. Yeah, it's a cheat code. Like yeah. you want to get somewhere faster. So if you've been through 10 years of business, mm -hmm. 
14, well, however many years of business you've been, and I'm thinking about getting into it, I could probably take your 14 years and turn it into four years, or take your 14 years and turn it into a year. Mm-hmm. I know um, when I first got started in real estate, the guy was in it for like seven years. I ended up doing a couple years worth of deals in my first year mm-hmm. because I learned from him. And now he was, he even was like, damn, how the hell you do this this fast? I was like, because I took all the good you had and all the bad and just put it all together and then we collapsed time. So mentorship is nothing but Chico's fast, yeah. fast, like a six flags. Uh, yeah. You got yeah. a mentor right now? I got a bunch of mentors. I got a mentor. I got a jet mentor. I got a health mentor. I got a business mentor, real estate mentor, uh, account. I got you. It's and I was just telling him that it's it's impossible to try to get even in relationships. It's impossible to try to get everything out of one person. That's not fair. Yeah. So I try to break things up. Okay, I got a mentor for this person, mentor for this person, mentor. Even in a relationship, mm-hmm. the ex just your person to be everything on one. That ain't that's unfair. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, it's got to be pressure to date y'all with this mindset. It's just it's not yeah. easy. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, it's, I think I'd be tough. just, my standards would be like, dang, all these stuff got a layer for me to even consider this to be something real. For example. <laughs> so, mindset. Like, I can't have a long conversation with 50% of women no more. It's not the same as before. It didn't even matter. I didn't care. But now it's like, I got a lot going on and it's, it matters. Like, us talking... Some people, some I, I believe some females don't want to hear me talk how I talk for a long period of time because it bores them or it might not be their interest. And I don't want to sit here and bore you, nor so do you don't want to sit here and I'm boring you. But we throw words out like mindset, right? We throw words out like mental health. Everybody has mindset. Everybody has mental health. What specifically are you looking for in terms of mindset? Hey, hey, CEO Donnie Wiggins here, and I am so excited to announce my new mentorship group is dropping. You may have already heard about it, but I wanted to, I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth directly from me. My new mentorship group, Actionable CEO, for entrepreneurs who are interested in professional growth, personal growth, and financial growth. You want to learn from me. Y'all have been asking for this for the last three years, and I have finally brought Actionable CEO back to serve you every single week, direct mentorship from me. You will also hear from other people who are in my community that I believe will be greatly impactful to you. You're gonna get behind the scenes. We're going to be spending some time together live. This is not pre recorded, this is live mentorship. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be connected, feel connected, you want to elevate your brand, you wanna elevate your life, you wanna elevate your level of success. Actionable CEO is for you. ActionableCEO.com. See you there. That's First of all, question. you got a girl? No. Okay. So yeah. what are you looking for? So what I mean by that is her mind has to be on the same wavelength as mine. Mm-hmm. Meaning my mind is to reach my goals. At my, my mind is on goals driven. My mind is goal driven like crazy. Like, man, I want to do better. I want to learn more. I want to do stuff. I want to get to the next level and stuff like that. Her mindset maybe is... She's still trying to figure it out. She don't. She don't want. She don't got big goals. She want to be in the club. Just be having fun. She want to live life right now. That's her thing. Her mindset is: I'm living life. I'm having fun. When's the last time you were in the club? Uh, <laughs> I was in the club probably like last month. Mm-hmm. Last mm-hmm. month. Probably so month you can do it. It's cool when you do it. It's a problem when they do it. Yeah, it's or- a problem when they do it. They want to do it every weekend, and they are not <laughs> goal driven, and they not focusing their time on goals on the outside of going to the club. They at home chilling, watching Netflix for eight hours a day. Are you cool with a woman who works in corporate, or do you prefer an entrepreneur? Um, I, I think I don't mind working for corporate. So what I've been going back and forth with is this. This is what I've been going back and forth with. I, I noticed that I don't want her to be super busy now. I don't want her to be 10 times, like 10 times as busy and I'm 10 times as busy too. Because when I'm slowing down, oh, I'm, on the road, I'm just being honest, this is what I'm starting to realize within myself. When I'm going on the road, I'm going to seven cities in seven days and I get done. And then now I got to sit down and relax and then I'll try to come and be with you and spend my time with and you. And you busy. And you busy. Now I was like, oh my Bro, God. that's hard. Bro, that's, I'm just, that's just that's what I've been like, feeling. You got to pick I'm just saying what, how I feel, bro. What I'm you saying a super she, ambitious woman. In a, in a homebody. No, she ha- I think a, it's got to be in the middle a little bit. It's got to be like, you got to have something going on. You got to be doing your thing, but don't be too busy that when I'm not busy, you He so want him to be ambitious, just don't be doing nothing. Like, what if you're seven, not doing nothing. What if when you're seven doing. cities in, her seven cities start? That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I would like that. I don't so how does that how even work? Tell, how but then if she not goal driven and you, stay in the house, you got to no problem. relax. It's not don't have to be like that. That's not true. She can have something going on, whether she not as ten times not busy too much as going me. on. She can do hair from the house. 
You can make good money doing hair. <laughs> okay. She can make she can get, make money good selling hair. She I'm don't just, have to be. I want somebody to clearly see that they're a good match for you, and they need to pull up in your DM. So. She could be selling hair and make a lot of money. It sounds like what you want, <laughs> in all seriousness, it sounds like what you want is a woman who has the ability to be successful, but also has the ability to follow you around wherever you are. I guess it don't got to be a follow me around everywhere I am, but in the midst of it got to be, she got to be available. Work from home. She got to be available. She got to be his free. operations manager. She got to do funding from home. <laughs> she could be helpful to the, the business room. too. She could be helpful mm -hmm. to the business. I wouldn't mind that because I'd be needing help. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mind somebody I'm with helping me. Romel, what's your mindset? Is it difficult to date you? Well, I'm, I'm in a relationship, so. Okay. Um, and I've been I've been with her since college, so like 10 years, you know okay. what I'm saying? Um, so I'm, I'm in a different category. I don't really know what the dating world is really like because I'm not outside doing those type of things, but I have safety in the fact that like, like she helped me build this thing up. Like a yeah. lot of the things that I'm doing, like this whole young mogul, the making of a mogul brand, mogul license, she came up with those ideas, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, and um, I was a knucklehead, right? So I went to college, like I told you, I was selling weed, had my pants hanging down. I'm like, forget the hood. Like, I, I'm like, you know, I had a certain mindset, but she was the first person when I was speaking to her, I said, yo, I want to open up a strip club. Yeah. I want to open up a liquor store. Like, these are my dreams. And typically when I speak to women um, at that time, they will be just excited just because I got goals, right? Mm -hmm. But she was the first person I said, why you want to open up a strip club? Why you want to degrade your women? Like, what if your mom was a stripper? What if your aunt was your sister? Like, what, would your daughter want to see that? I'm like, damn. Why you want to open up a liquor store? Why you want to poison your people? Can you do something more positive? Like this is the first conversation with a woman that challenged like the way I thought about entrepreneurship, and that's when I became uh, more, I guess, community oriented, right? Yeah. More purpose driven, and not just about profit. So, so are we engaged yet? You married. You are married? Yeah. Okay, you said in a relationship. You yeah. gotta say I'm married. Well, I, well, I would. I've been married for ten years. I've been in a relationship with ten. Married two years. Okay, where's your ring? You don't. Nah, I, I lost the ring. I gotta get a new ring. Huh. That's a whole battle. I got. So we on a jet. We on a PJ. Yeah, we yeah, flying yeah, to yeah. Miami. You lost the ring. Oh uh, yeah, I did. I did. Like how long ago? I'm, it's probably like six, seven months now. Hmm. Hmm. Boom. <laughs> he legit. He legit. It's the truth, though. It's he the legit. Truth. He legit. It's the truth. He actually. Yo, he, he legit. He actually really loves. Yeah, he legit. Okay. We, we had no, some conversations that we struggled down to four o'clock in the morning one time, and he does not it, play about his. Life. Usually, I bring the with me. Like we be on the jets yeah, together. I take when I go on tour. Ramel gives me very faithful, committed, just like good, humble heart yeah, energy. Yeah, good dude. These two don't. <laughs> these two give me troublemaker energy for sure. Like these, you a wild Funny. child. You give me relationship guy. Yeah, you I'm do. Sorry, I'm sorry. You give me relationship guy, but you give me like I don't play like you're real. You're the you're the level headed one of the group, right? You're level headed. You're gonna make a good decision based on the facts. You're. We don't want you looking at no contracts though. Uh, we determined yeah. that we don't want you looking Listen, at the contract. You're gonna sign but up you me. are the contract looker. Listen. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. You're firm. You're pushing the envelope. You don't mind confrontation. They always yeah. make me the that person. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't you don't mind confrontation. Yeah. Smitty going with the flow. Smitty like, yeah. what y'all figured out? What did y'all yeah, think whatever about? Whatever it is, I'm with it. Whatever yeah. it is, I'm with it, but. Yeah. I'm gonna push this up times 10. I'm gonna push it times This is how I go. He go with the flow. He might come up with an idea. So then they call me and say, make the decision. Make the decision. Yeah, you make the decision. What are we doing? So you the tiebreaker. Sometimes yeah. it'd be like that. Yeah. Or yeah. the initiator. Even yeah. like, you're gonna, you gonna take like the idea. I'm like 20 things in one, but. Okay. Yeah. Are you available to date? Not necessarily, so <laughs> not, necessarily. not necessarily no. So so my situation kinda like his, so I'm separated. Okay. So I got met her back in when I was what, eighteen, we was together for like nine, ten years. I got married, but we separated and like we going through the divorce process. Gotcha. So, um so like that mindset thing, I think that right now, so two things. When your mindset is and it's for guys in general. How you start when you first meet somebody, especially that young, mm -hmm. you change. Yeah. And it's not like like my wife, right? About to be ex-wife, whatever. She's a great person, but I change like so you start changing, start getting into different things. So and this is actually the first time I've even spoke about this online. Okay. But um you change a little bit and so it's not even that their mindset is different. Your mindset might start going through the motions. So that's one thing. Um and then now I think mindset Right now, it's harder now, you know, being, you know, out of a marriage or whatever, mm -hmm.
because being 29 you got stuff going on and your mindset is focused and you don't really like you say you don't play that stuff yeah everybody trying to marry you right at the gate mm. that's the problem like you meet somebody and they like yo you got this going on and you and, and i don't mind courting like i'll and i'm a guy i'll pay bills i do that stuff it's like oh shoot he's solid like hold on wait yeah, you pay bills yeah, yeah you put that out just on the internet i look I pay yeah, bills. Yeah. Oh, that well, was don't pay bills. That was rough. Me, don't pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Wait, structure for that. Wait, y'all pay bills? No, I just don't pay bills. I'm no rip. They they all far away people. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's get back bills. to the I pay bills. <laughs> yeah. For these ladies who are looking to court you, like seriously, nah, I'm cool. what's the prerequisite? Like, are you just dating women and you like, what you got, what you need? No, so we talking, we, we locked in. Like, I mean, we locked in. Then, so in a relationship, you're paying bills. In a relationship, for sure, 100%. Yeah. I feel like as a man, mm -hmm. if you're locked in with somebody, you in a relationship, she shouldn't have to worry about stuff. But she has to be doing something to make sure you cool. Mm -hmm. right. Like, for example, um, if me and you dating right, and we, you helping me with the business, you giving me great ideas, yeah. and even to the, like, you might be cooking, like, I don't mind cooking you, but you might be cooking, or like, even might, hey, you got a flight, I'll pack your bag, I'll do something like that. And we're working together. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to worry about rent. You shouldn't or more. You shouldn't have to worry about certain things, mm -hmm. especially if I'm over there. Mm -hmm. And we really like locked in. They always say I'm old school with it. So you know, like old school guys, like she shouldn't have to do this. She shouldn't have to do this. She shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to the market. Like certain small things like that. But I handle everything else. So okay. like I don't mind taking flights, booking trips, and stuff like that. But. I don't know. That's. I just feel like a woman shouldn't do certain things. Like even mm -hmm. at a hole in the door, like you shouldn't do that. A woman should not be opening the door. Yeah, that's just how walking I close to the the closest to the street on yeah. the sidewalk. Y'all handle that. Smitty, yeah. like she just walked up. Walk <laughs> oh, up. Like, right. I look at, uh, <laughs> you know why they think he's saying that? He, he's he's with somebody. Though. I'm single too. Though. Okay. So it's a different approach because. I'm single, and there's women that come in and think that they obligated to get their bills paid. We're not in a relationship. We're not together. So I'm talking on that. Oh term, yeah, hell no. As in, I'm single, and we and I meet you, and we cool, and you talk, and you're having that thing. I'm gonna pay all your bills. It gotta make sense. We so, just start talking. A week. Relationship is different. Our relationship is different. I'm not saying that. Well, we really together. We really, you know, locked in like this, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, me personally, I'm single. I don't have nobody like that. Mm -hmm. So for someone to come in and just think that that's gonna happen, I'm like, nah. Are y'all fun to be with? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. it can become really boring dating an entrepreneur. Uh, like, yeah, no. in my experience, I've dated some fun people and I've dated some really, really boring entrepreneurs because, as men especially, y'all are so focused. Like, you're so focused. You're so one track minded on the goal. And it's like, we're at dinner and all we're talking about is business and we're at some resort somewhere and we're talking about business and you got conference calls and you got this to do and that to do we're on a private jet right now y'all about to go to miami and we're recording a podcast like y'all boring that's that's, that's <laughs> no so that's the I thing that get but i want to ask you a question as from a woman's perspective right but what makes it because for us it's like this is lit like we, i take my family on jets we go into places but what makes it not boring dating an entrepreneur because you so also you want take to your work? family on jets we go on trips that's cool yeah. But is there any quality time in that scenario for me? So like, okay. are you on the jet up here Ooh. and you out here with your guys, you on here doing conference <laughs> calls, and we back here, you know, me and the kids or me and whoever back here, just you're in the space, but we're not together. That's boring. Mm. Uh, 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 we just, we okay. just had this conversation. Uh, uh, I said I said this too. I think I am born. I damn. Now, if you look at it in that lens, I am a little boring. Because when people come around me, I be thinking that I'm doing a good gesture for you to come learn this with me. No, I, don't take... Damn. Listen, you can't take a young lady who is into her thing and say, yo, I got this mastermind that I want to go. If this is not her thing, yeah. that's not fun for her. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So do you know how to not dumb it down, but do you know how to adapt and be fun for who you're dating? Me personally, I'm with the shits, 100%. What does that mean? But the thing is with me, I I was with someone for 10 years that wasn't an entrepreneur. So I was about to be single a long time ago by being like that. So what yeah. I adopted, and that's what I told him to do, every Sunday was our day. I'm talking about life, yeah. business was shut down on Sunday. Yeah. She wouldn't bother me Monday through Saturday. I'm talking about I can work from sun up to sundown, Zooms, properties, rehabs, Sunday, 
that shit better be off. We mm -hmm. locked in. So mm -hmm. with me, I know how to have fun. Like, let's say, for example, me and you go to Miami, right? Okay, I'm going to knock this podcast out 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. The second we're done with that podcast, we taking shots, we doing drinks, we partying, we doing everything. Monday morning, I'm back to work. So yeah. I know how to clear out a day for somebody. But I had to because I, I was married to somebody that wasn't a entrepreneur yeah. so i had to make a day otherwise i would have been single a long time ago i think scheduling time for your significant other is important it is important but you also have to still color outside the lines yeah. i was in a situation um with a relationship and we had our day like this mm -hmm. is date night this is family day we're not talking business but let's just say that day was a sunday i i was made to feel like Monday through Saturday, you don't ask any questions, you don't ask anything of me, you just let me focus, you let me work. Mm -hmm. But what if I get lonely on Wednesday? I can't come and need some time for you on a Wednesday. So I just think, you know, I know that as men, and especially young men, like y'all are so focused and you want to be in a certain position before you do X, Y, and Z. It's like, yo, I gotta, y'all just go from one goal to the next goal to the next goal to the next goal. But if I can offer any advice, as a woman who's mm -hmm. old enough to be your mother um okay not quite not, in this <laughs> not day quite, and age but still in this day and age yeah. yes if i could offer some advice is to definitely do a great job at also prioritizing your love life if love is interesting for you like if you were a man that was saying oh i'm not dating i'm not on that right now then cool but y'all want to be in relationships you want to be out here he said no <laughs> you don't i got a question for you i'm not gonna be right now in that space, you were the person that said don't bother me Monday through Saturday, mm -hmm. or the vice versa. Vice versa. So, would have been different if that guy set expectations. Hey, I'm working on this goal of August, and we're gonna be done that goal at the end of August. Then in September, we can go ahead and start doing stuff, not just on Sunday and moving around. Yeah, I mean, theoretically it sounds good, right? Okay. But usually what happens is you hit that goal in August, and then in August, there's another goal that you need to hit in September. Yeah, but that's when you can flip the script back on them. Like, hey, this is what we agreed upon. This is what we set up. True. That's how I, I but operate. But then you feel restricted. So let's say let's say you have a goal. We're dating, yeah. right? You have a goal and you say, I need to grow my community to 5,000 people by in two months, in 60 days. 60 days come, you grow your community to 5,000 people. But now you got these 5,000 people and you realize I need to serve them and I need to keep them. Now I need to be focused on retention. We're about to do a conference. And I'm like, but you told me in the September, October was my time. Now you're going into exactly. conference mode. You're thinking if I don't do this, I'm going to lose people. I'm going to have a retention issue, but I'm demanding of you like, no, do what you said you were going to do in the back of your mind. You might do it, but you're feeling a little resentment. You're feeling like, I don't really know if this is good for me right now because I have goals and you're standing in the way of that. So I think it comes down to the type of individual. And I feel like I feel like in a relationship, as long as I'm trying, you trying, we can mm -hmm. work it out. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. I'm working on my community to get on the 5,000 people. Are you helping me with that? It depends. I Maybe mean, physically or giving me advice or listening at the end of the night. Hey, me, I got the 2,000 so far. Donnie Wiggins, yeah. the woman that I am, yeah. absolutely. Okay. But the woman that you're dating in real life, maybe not. All right, that's like, why I'm dating Donnie Wiggins. Yeah, for sure. So you're helping me, right? We putting this together. Yeah. So in my Derek Boone as in today, okay, I'm trying. You're trying to help me, so I got, I got it's my right to try to help you yeah. and make us work. Yeah. Okay, even though I want to get to 6,000 there, I want to get to 10,000 there. Yeah. I'm gonna try to make sure we work, and I'm gonna make you happy. So even though I want to get it to ten thousand, I'm still gonna try to make sure this is home is good first, and I'm gonna make sure it's set. And we still gonna block off that Wednesday or whatever because I gotta honor my word. Yeah. But for me, money is not everything. I I see. I, your home not right. Your money your money fucked up. It's all messed up. Like yeah. if your home is if you have a woman in your home, if you have a family in your home and your home ain't right everything else is messed uh, I've up been there, so now I know. if you are operating at that level of integrity and that's what's actually happening yes but in many scenarios like you know the guys that y'all are mentored by like y'all are mentored by guys that are married are in relationships and these guys are gone 10 days a week they're gone 10 days a week they're doing things now their families are living very lavish lifestyles and they've got the babies and the mansions and the exotic vehicles and stuff but at what point like like I couldn't date my entrepreneur friends. I'm like, y'all way too busy. Right. My girlfriends are always like, such and such is fine, date them. You see how busy he is? I don't want to date that and I'm a busy woman, but I am ready 
to unbusy. Somebody come and unbusy me. I'm ready to be unbusy. Like, depend on the person. But, but I, feel, I feel like it's just unfair. Because, like, right, you said these are too busy, right? But, like, you want somebody that's busy or somebody that's broke. Like, but what, I don't think I don't think I don't think it's either or I don't think yeah, you're both. either busy or broke right I am busy in this season that I'm in right now but six months ago six to twelve months ago I was very not busy for the whole year and I ain't broke but I think it, that's what we said though but also I feel like it goes down to where you are in your life age wise because like when you yeah. right, right now everything you were saying I felt it because that's really where I'm at I think that taking my family with me on trips and masterminds like but now you, you did say them that's bringing you into what i'm doing that's, that's not work. Getting, yeah that's not quality time yeah. but i'm in this phase of grind 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 because yeah. i gotta build for my family stability mm -hmm. for the next x amount of years so you know what a woman you, really appreciates from men like you who are busy mm -hmm. you intentionally carving out time right doing what you know she would love to do yeah, yeah, yeah. like that would yeah. be so well, let me let me just let me just make this easy for you yeah. if you could once a quarter some grand gesture and by grand gesture I mean a trip a vacation you know a dinner date where you laid the outfit out on the bed and did that like if once a quarter you can tune into her need okay. and I'm not saying the rest of the time you're, you're all about your needs you're meeting her basic needs every single day but I'm talking about that gesture that says, wow, Romel actually took, like, as busy as he is, he took this time out to plan this four-day trip for us. Yeah. He left the home, I mean, the, the work phone at home. He did this. Like, he had everything done. He got with the travel agent. If y'all learn to incorporate that stuff, like, quarterly, you have no problems right. out of a woman who's playing team with you. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine's a little yeah. different, though, because I, don't, I, I, I know that I'm so focused and I'm so goal driven that I don't even want to entertain the relationship stuff because I know I'm not going to be able to treat her the how I, she's supposed to be treated right now on the aspect of I'm not going to I don't want to cater to that right now because I want to cater to the stuff I'm doing That's and, I'm, fair. and I don't want to take off time of doing that right now to make sure that right now so I'd rather wait and be honest to say I'm not ready uh -huh. and then uh, wait and to get into that till I'm ready how much money do you make a couple bucks <laughs> How many, how many commas? I make seven figures. How many zeros? I make seven figures. You make seven figures. So how many more figures do you need to feel ready? Mm. <laughs> um, I think it has to be on autopilot at a certain number of months um, that I'm comfortable. And then, all right, that, that, that stress is off. Mm -hmm. I'm financially good all the way around the board. I don't have a stress about that no more. That is not nothing I have to stress about. It's already taken care of 100%. Like, but you know, a woman will come in and multiply everything you got going on if you pick the right woman. Right. So, so I say to an extent. I, I, I hear that and I'm, I'm here to If often. you pick the right woman. <laughs> I, I'll let you talk. Yeah. That's not an easy thing for me either too now. So we had a we had a discussion about that too. That's not easy for me no more because I didn't have nobody when I before I started all this stuff to come build up with me so that I know it's a security type of thing. It's not for what I have going on now. So it's a harder thing for me to find that person too, as I've been probably, you know, here and there thinking about searching and having the thoughts of want to be with somebody sometimes. And then it's been hard for me to, to really know, like, all right, this would be a person that I'm going to be able to build this thing out with. It's hard for mm. me. Mm. It's hard letting somebody in on this empire that you're building. Yes. Hey, hey, are you a service-based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of a result, but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media? You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client? Great news is that's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays, directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. That's why it's so good to start yeah. before that empire is yeah, built because true. you already kind of got that built-in trust factor. So I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but uh, I think it may be somebody in my past 
that I've been messing with on and off type of thing or somebody that I'm really wasn't What's her name? With. I don't got it. That's 50 50. I don't got it. Where does she live? Who? What city and state? No, it's not a one person. Huh? What? It's not a specific person right now. You hear this guy? <laughs> it's not a specific My man, person. Right. <laughs> you ain't throwing him under the bus? No, no, no. <laughs> it's not a specific, so it's, it could be one of the somebody's from your past. It was, it, was, it was like I had good women that I came across that I just told seriously that I'm not ready. Who's that, the last woman you told that to? Uh, <laughs> that was a mile ago. Are we transparent or are we trying yeah. to, what's her name? I mean, y'all don't know. I want her to know how you feel about it. Yeah, like, it was somebody in Chicago. What's her name? Yeah. But she don't lie. You mess up anything. Current, right? <laughs> but don't answer I'm that question. I'm over here like no. Don't answer that yeah. question. Don't answer that question. Uh, it was a girl from Chicago, though. Okay. Yeah. All right. I need. Crazy. I just I wanna I wanna get to the bottom of what you got going on. Seriously. Oh, yeah. So the, one of the biggest mistakes that I made was feeling like I had to accomplish a certain level of success as a woman. Now, it's a little different for me as a woman. Like, I, I have a stepfather. I didn't have my biological father. I probably dealt with, like, some abandonment issues and things like that growing up. I was in a space where I saw a lot of people, a lot of women that I know date wealthy men, which is probably why it hasn't been so important to me because I never really saw it as a permanent upgrade to their lives. Like, while you're with him, your life is lit. But the moment y'all break up, he takes everything back, like the cars and, you know, every, you got to get out of his house and, every, you know. So for me, I had always been this super ambitious girl turned woman that just wanted to bring something to the table, right? But after I started bringing something to the table, I got addicted to the feeling of accomplishing goals. Like it just went from goal to goal to goal to goal. And I fit relationships kind of into that. If I can give you any advice, like one day you're going to be 44 years old and Operating like that, you're still gonna be single, right? Possibly, and you're gonna wish you had started so much sooner. You're gonna wish because by then you're gonna be an eight figure, maybe more earner. And now it's really like, who do I trust? If someone comes to you right now and you feel in there, y'all went out on a couple of dates, and then she says to you, Well, boom, can you show me really how to um, invest in property? But that's good for you, yeah, that's good. Enough. Yeah, you don't feel like this is. Maybe what she wanted the whole time? No, because my position is supposed to inspire you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take, you know, you still monitor everything, but I'm not going to take that too deep because if I'm start dating you and then I'm like, you know what? Can, can you show me how to do the podcast thing? Yeah. You're supposed to be inspiring me. You're supposed to be inspiring each other. Yeah. So we got to spend a little time before I just start teaching people how to get money. Like I, seriously, Why? because um, the intention. I see you just. Yeah, it's, I you just sometimes saying. it's the intention, but also sometimes it's just exhaustion, mm -hmm. right? Like we got to determine that we're gonna go a distance, mm -hmm. and it's not like we got to be dating for a year. Like I am a, I am a helpmate by the natural yeah. definition of what that means. I'm gonna come in and I'm fixing your life. <laughs> I, I'm identifying money. Like I'm an operations person. I'm an integrator. So I'm coming in and I'm identifying like where the issues are and I just want to I want to fix everything. But it's a problem because at the same time, I am going to complain in six months that our relationship is all about business. You go to therapy? Yes. How does it go? It's cool. They talk to you about that? Um, yeah, I'm a fixer. So one of the things I'm gonna give you some advice. Okay. Maybe you can you can give people game and help them with money day one. But you monitor how much you give them. So yeah. I'm gonna help you and give you advice, but I'm not gonna physically fix this stuff. Mm -hmm. I dealt with the same problem. Mm -hmm. But my therapist told me, okay, be, how about you limit how much, okay, you give them some content, give them some game, but you don't go to that appointment with them. Yeah. Let them still go on their own. So maybe that's what. I like it. But what happens when they say, oh, yo, that's dope information, come with me? No, you can handle that. You got it. I yeah. trust you. I, I trust believe you. in you. I wanna see how you run on your own. I love that. Yeah. You know what, y'all? I think we as a generation right now, people need to be inspired. Like, I'm inspired by what y'all are doing. Well poised, black men out here. Before I even get to that, what y'all think about the Alabama brawl, the river brawl that happened recently? I think it was cool until the dude pushed the, the guy off the river <laughs> and cracked him. Because now that's a case. 
You mean the girl, the woman, the dude with the chair? Yeah, yeah hit the woman over the head with the chair. That's a case. He just got it was arrested. cool just yeah. fighting, but when he hit him with the chair, now that's like assault. That's all types of. Before yeah. that moment, though, did you feel like any sense of pride? Like people, I feel like people as a culture that was like, man, I got a chance now. Like this mm -hmm. is, I think it was deeper than just the fight. It was like, oh shoot, I got a chance to go at this other race. That's yeah. me personally. Yeah. I think it was, I was laughing at it. I'm like, man, it's crazy. Like, this, this is a crazy <laughs> I was situation. Laughing. I was, I didn't think I'd think too deeply on it. Like I seen other people do. Like this is black time. Like beating up people and hitting people because of one because of chairs in the head. All right, that was bad. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't that black bad. culture at that time. Yeah. I think, but like it was a crazy situation though. Yeah. yeah. I seen clips, but I don't really know. I don't really know the whole full thing of what happened. Yeah. Honestly, I just see some stuff on social media. You don't but know I don't, what happened. Not, cause I don't be. I don't be like. Hey, I'd be really honest, I'd be in my zone and all I do is what I do. And that's probably, yeah. I feel like that holds me back as well. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just so focused on what's in my real estate credit, my family doing this, I'm, anything else, I don't be paying attention to. Yeah. So one thing that stood out for me in that particular incident that occurred is that we really can come together and unite for the greater good. And that's in alignment with what you guys are doing, coming together and uniting for the greater good. Like. We have such a, not we, but there are so many people who have this, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, and it's gotta be me kind of mindset. I don't see that at all here, and it's so damaging. We can get so much further along. Like, did y'all take off to a different level when y'all started collaborating? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything oh, yeah. leveled up. Like, we did our own, we all individually did our own good things, and we were doing great. And then when we came together, it elevated everything up, like a notch too, a notch or two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like what specifically changed? Like collaboration, because people see it all the time, but unfortunately, most people, or many people, I hate saying most, many people have the mindset of, um, I can't share my ideas with you, you'll try to take it. If I give you too much insight into my business, you're gonna steal my people from me. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so we look at collaboration and it's just another word. It's just, we're throwing these words out there. You hear collaboration, collaboration, but what what changed for y'all when y'all started to collaborate? It's, I think it sped everything up. So so we all done seven figures, mm -hmm. but now working together, if seven figures took X amount of months, now it took a month. Y'all yeah. made seven figures in a month before? Yeah. Doing what? So a bunch of different things, but the other thing is we was talking about individually buying a, a big mansion now we talking about like how can we do this in a couple months how can mm -hmm. we, now you got other people that's accountability partners mm -hmm. like yo putting pressure on it like yo i think we should for sure 100 percent. he text uh what was it yesterday yo we don't buy this by december like i'm cutting y'all off <laughs> he straight said that like we need to stop bullshit <laughs> He cutting y'all off the way you just cut me off when I said, what y'all do to make seven figures <laughs> yeah, in a month? Pretty much. Give me a couple of ideas. What do you do to make a million dollars in a month? You can, uh, some, you can get some digital product. A yeah, yeah. million dollars in a month? Um, I would say to host to host a big enough event for enough people to help enough people, other people make money. Mm. And then it will result and solve someone else, that problem for someone else. Mm -hmm. You get compensated for it. So if, if you can be able to help enough people and get them help them get to where they're trying to go to faster or a higher point, um, it will be helpful for you and compensated for you. That's game. One of my favorite sayings is the more people you help get what they want, the easier yeah. and faster it becomes to get what you want. Succeed through other people. Succeed through other people. Yes, yeah, service. Service is really where the impact is, also where the profit is. But is this is this a money thing or like are your heartstrings attached to this? Like, do you feel like you're operating in purpose? My no, no, we, they, my they, uh, we, we be up like <laughs> when we had a whole we touch. had a whole mastermind. We was up to like three, four in the morning one time, just saying, yo, how can we get more success out of the people around us, right? Like, that's really what our focus is on. Like, we don't want to give information, and that's one piece of it. But how do we help people get to that destination? Mm -hmm. That's a whole entire different piece. And it's to add to like the far as the relationships and, the, and, the, and why we came together. Um, I had a project and I was doing a fix and flip with one of my students, right? So that's what we do. We partner with some of our students, do fix and flips. And um, one of the contractors, right, contractor, end up uh, just running off the job, right? But he's in Philly, so I just made a phone call to him. And then he brought his contractors off a job that he had going on, brought them on to my job and got things going. So 
just being able to make money like that, but also being able to move fast and being able to make a yeah. phone call. Yeah. Like these are the things. Leveraging that each other's resources. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Just, that makes a lot of things easy. That's huge. Do y'all have like a big community together too? Yeah. 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 Over, yeah. I think we over 1,500 now. Mm. Yeah. It's called the Fund Your Freedom. Yeah. Fund Your Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And what's that community about? About getting funding, but taking that fund. Because a lot of times people get funding and they just like, we're going to Miami with, and I'll take that funding and don't buy hard assets like real estate. And then either the flips or the monthly cash flow pays for things like this, or even not even stuff like this. Okay, I have a thousand dollar, fifteen hundred dollar rent, or I have a five hundred dollar car note. Maybe that funding what you hard assets pay back the funding, and then the profits pay your car note every month. Your profits pay for your your rent every month. Your profits pay your mortgage every month. The average American says an extra thousand dollars of not paying a mortgage and not paying a rent would change your life and open yeah. up freedom for them. Fund your freedom. I like that. Y'all are so well spoken, so Appreciate intelligent. That. But I know, um, and I, the, the pilot's probably going to come in here in a minute. But what causes you pain and trouble, like specifically in your business? What are the things that you're struggling with right now that you could? So, you so for me, with? this is big, right? Um, it's communication. Like I'm now learning that I have to be better with my communication. Because first, it was my wife telling me, "Oh, you don't communicate, right?" I go buy a house and. She don't even know. I just bought a. I just bought a crib. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I posted on the gram. You just Man. bought a new property. You bought a new store. I'm like, but I, I'm just doing this, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, all right, she just nagging me. She just saying stuff right there. But then I was working at uh, at Pepsi, right? And then my manager said, oh, you're not communicating. You didn't CC on me on this email. You didn't communicate this at the end of the day. And I'm yeah. seeing a common theme. And now as a full time entrepreneur. My team, like, well, we didn't get that message, right? Yeah. You thought it in your brain that we were supposed to execute on this, but we didn't We didn't hear that from you. So mm -hmm. then I'm realizing, like, I have to actually focus on being a better communicator, right? Stopping, taking time throughout the day. So I actually put notifications in my calendar on my phone to notify me, okay, this is going to be a 15-minute debrief. How do I need to communicate? Who do I need to communicate with? Because yeah. if I don't do that, I'm just going to be moving. Yeah. So that's, like, one of the things that, like, I'm working on, like, you know, that's some pain right there. What are you struggling with working uh, on? Hey, folks, sorry to interrupt you, but it uh, looks like we are going to have to leave if we're going to make our on-time departure. So Okay, okay. can we'll we get, like, three up. minutes to absolutely, wrap this up? Absolutely, right. absolutely, and we we'll get you going. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, then, all right, so um, mine's organization. Okay. Um, I'm, I started growing pretty fast and things getting to the next level for me, but I didn't know how to organize that and structure it properly internally in my business to be able to catch the scaling so mm -hmm. organization and then building a proper team in the right putting the proper people in place in the right places in my business to properly grow as the as the speed i'm growing you have employees now uh i, I got putting people in place slowly but slowly different part, departments in my business yes i have a team you know, i got a building team now so it's getting better it's getting better but i still need some more help because you better. can run into seven figures on accident yeah so for, for sure for sure you can run into seven figures on accident boom what you struggling with I think everybody just being in your own way. I feel like I can scale, like we had seven figures, but I think I can scale to eight for sure, for sure, if I just get out my own way. Like, he tell me about, they, he for sure tell me about the time content-wise. Like, yeah. I'm the guy, I get on this thing, take off, and nobody ever knew it even happened. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's deeper than that for me. So I just need to content more, and I also need to um, just double down on some of the things that, the marketing-wise. Yeah. Like, so I started out, really mainly real estate so real estate our market is so low key so under the table we buy a house nobody knows what's going on so getting into a bigger business you got to market more so yeah. you know like you said we, we can make money but to really really scale i gotta get out my own way yeah, yeah. i like that I'm a little there's, too gonna low key. Be, there's gonna be so many people who are inspired um by y'all and the journey that y'all are on like the cleanest most head on shoulders <clears throat> and I've not worked with you, but just in having this conversation, familiar familiarity and in, in the circles that you're running in, like, I'm really, really proud of what y'all are doing. Now, Thank people you. are going to be reaching out. You know how this goes. People are going to be reaching out. They want to know how they can do it, too, how they can be sitting on a PJ doing a podcast <laughs> episode before they hit Miami. Who can you really help? What's the ideal profile of people who are ready to talk to y'all? I think so we just want to help somebody to have the will. I say it's like, it's two things that you need to succeed. You need the will, you need the skill. We gonna teach you the skill, right? We teach you how to set your business up the proper way, how to build your credit, how to get capital. But we just want anybody that has a will to create an additional stream of income, do something to put your family on the next level, right? Start that business, 
make seven figures. It truly just comes down to any entrepreneur that you know has that will to change their life. That's who we want to help. Does it have to be an entrepreneur, or can I just be getting started? You, well, you, we want you to have the aspirations of an entrepreneur. So you can start, okay. you can be in your nine to five or whatever your case is, but what do you want to do something greater? Do you want to start a business? That's what we, we want to help you do that. All right. Well, I want to add that just yeah. freedom in general. Yeah. Like I always say, if you buy at least three houses and you got money coming in from each one, yeah. like that's enough to set some freedom up. Like I don't got to pay my utilities. I don't got to pay my bills. Now I can start living a little more free. So you don't got to be an entrepreneur to do that. Mm -hmm. Now to take it to the next level, hell yeah. But just to get started, you don't gotta be a full blown entrepreneur. I love it. Last question, and we gotta let the pilot do what the pilot is doing because he's sitting sideways in his seat. Yeah. He's ready to go. Um, what do you do with your money outside of making money? What do you do with your money? Um, outside of making money, I invest. I've, I've been doing this for the last year. I've been investing it back into my business and back into myself because uh, that's what I've seen been working me to, to me to continue to grow. It's been investing back into myself as in personal development, uh, learning new skill sets. Mm -hmm. um, as you reach new levels, the thing that you did to reach that level is not going to be the same thing you need to do to reach the next level. Yeah. So you're going to have to continue learning. So I'm, I'm investing back into myself for extra coaching, extra mentoring, so that I can learn new layers of things I need to learn as I'm growing. And that yeah. stuff will be struggling a little bit because you don't know how to handle this part. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then I have to keep reinvesting back into myself. I'm with that. I and also I, believe that the first investment you make should be back into yourself. Yeah, so I, I did good with that this far. Uh, but I also, I also be spending money on myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll mean, be buying stuff. I'll yeah, be buying stuff. I'm supposed to. I got tone down on the frivolous spending on clothes and yeah. jewelry. And, I need uh, to come in there and audit your line yeah, items. Yeah, I need help. I just, I say, I be need help sometimes. Donnie and from a coaching perspective. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know which one you were saying. From, no, Romel, yeah. the most responsible, I think, out of the group. What are you doing with your money? They know why. I put my money. Boone is looking like most no responsible. Money, man. Well, I put my money, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> Look, I put my, all my money in life insurance. I put all my money in life insurance. They know, that they know that for It's the change that's the problem. Mm. <laughs> it's a change. Yeah, so a little change. A little it's change. A change. That's but like problem. big money, any big like, money, I put it in life insurance. I make sure you know my that, that's my first goal. How can my family be set seven to ten generations from now? That's every. That's my first focus. Yeah. And then from there, I'm invest back in myself, reinvest into my business, give back, right, to the community, family, friends, things like that. Yeah, because it's bigger. It's bigger than us now. I think it's starting to grow bigger than just me. It's for kind of other people now. Right? Yeah. My yeah. mom, man, my sister, my my daughter, uh, her mom. You know, I, I'm I'm now working hard for generations of other people around me and my circle. You know, my family and my people that's close to me right now more so than just myself too. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Cool. For me, I reinvest. So it's three things. I reinvest back into business, real estate. I just keep buying houses and. Um, I travel, so I, the extra change. I, I like, I love travel. I've probably been around the world like twice. Yeah. And then I got a lot of responsibilities, so paying for people's stuff, handling stuff. Like mom, sis, like I pay for a lot of stuff. So yeah. It's the responsibilities. You sound like me. You yeah. definitely sound like me. I think it's so fitting that we had a conversation about money, business, goals, relationships yeah, yeah. in a private jet. Like this is. I don't know if it's everybody's American dream, but this is definitely the dream. Like, yeah. I literally watched y'all in real time, book a jet, get on the jet, and I said I had to come to make sure this jet was real. We got the, we got, we got, the, the, the jet is jetting. Oh, the, the jet is jetting. We're, sit, we're sitting in the jet. Y'all are about to take off. I really wish I could go to Miami with y'all. You should. But I will next time. Next time. Y'all are about to be like on this seven day world tour situation y'all have going on. Yeah. I'm letting y'all men focus on what y'all got to get focused yeah. on, but super proud of all of y'all like super proud of each and every single one of y'all i think that y'all can shift the culture financially for sure stay focused and keep operating with integrity like thank you. for real for real thank you. are we reaching one instagram or do we need to list them all do you have a community page uh, we got individual instagrams right now okay so we'll make sure they're listed in the video you guys check these guys out whoever resonated with you they are community builders what's the name of the community Fund your freedom. Fund your freedom. Yep. And if there's any evidence that these gentlemen are funding their freedom, we're sitting in it right now. So can't wait to see you on the next episode of Full Transparency. We out.